Hey guys, uh, welcome to day number 20 of the 30 day practice blueprint. Uh, yesterday we went over a, a lot of durable medical equipment uh, stuff. There, there's a, a lot of things that you guys can dispense in your office. And we're gonna talk today about uh, in-office dispensing. All I can say is just start doing it. In terms of durable medical equipment, I would start with just a walking boot. If you're not doing walking boots, um, non-custom stuff like walking boots, um, uh, night splints, ankle braces, and kind of determine how you're going to use that. Once you get used to using that, then you can start doing more custom things. And that's where you train your staff. There's like different scanning tools. There's STS socks that we use for, for determining uh, how to make the braces appropriately. Uh, and so what, what I do is I do the prescription and uh, I also put in uh, all of the uh, documentation and rationale behind it. Now, there's a lot of things you have to be be aware of. We didn't really go too much into detail because I don't want to go overwhelmed, but you have to be careful of like same and similar. And specifically, you have to document how things are charted in your in your chart. So I'm going to go back to actually yesterday and I'm going to put in like the chart notes, okay? What did I use for my charts? Uh, so in case you get audited, you have to have things like specifically in there. Um, it's being used for this joint. It, you know, it's going to take the pressure off of it you know, these things, we have these standard things in our medical record. So I'll put some of those medical record uh, things in, 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 in yesterday's. Today, we're going to go over um, durable uh, in-office dispensing. Now, I want to tell you guys a backstory to this. When I first started and I was in school, I went to the, the academy meetings of the AAPPM, which, which I think were great. And, and I wasn't even practicing, but I had like, I, everyone there going to come in with plantar fasciitis. I, they were going to come out with like an air heel, uh, a night splint, a new pair of shoes I was going to sell them. They're going to get custom orthotics. They're going to get a court. They're going to get all this stuff. And then you realize you, you're very limited on your time. And... And you, you, and you can't overwhelm the patients with giving them everything that first visit. It's just too overwhelming. No matter how, quote unquote, confident you are about the treatment or what they need, physically, you just don't have enough time to offer all that stuff. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can use staff that, that can help you, or you can kind of simplify things. And that's what I've kind of done. I've kind of simplified things in terms of in-office dispensing. So my, we're going to talk about 80-20 in-office dispensing. These are like the most important tips, okay? So my most important tip would be to use a checklist. Now, you, you see I'm kind of harping on these checklists, but it just, it just makes my life, my practice so much easier. When someone comes in with plantar fasciitis, I have my checklist, both the, the one, if you go back to yesterday, it's actually that, that, that print one, that print checklist that it has in there, different types of, of in-office dispensing things. Um, not specifically though, for, so for example, it says uh, home, home therapy, and that would be where they're getting a foam roller, things like that. I might write it on the bottom what they need, like a callus cream or a pumice bar or something else like that, okay? So the first thing would be that using that checklist that I use within my patient presentations, because that's going to remind you what are the things that you have to offer with each diagnosis, okay? So that's number one. The second thing is, is all being equal, offer things that cost more. OK, you might think, oh, man, he's so like greedy or something like that. Not really. You only have so much time. So I used to spend like 20 minutes talking about a two dollar pad. OK, instead of talking about an orthotic that we charge five hundred and fifty for. And, and so what I've realized now, I'll just give them the two dollar pad OK, to create goodwill. And then I'll talk to them about the orthotic if they really need an orthotic. What you don't talk about they're not gonna know exists unless they go online. So we have to be the ones that introduce these things to our patients. And, and there's a plethora of stuff that you can offer. What I find, find now is these, these lower price things, a lot of times I'll give them to patients now, just because I don't wanna have that conversation of, of how much it is, or I'll just have my staff have that conversation. Okay, so all equal, I would offer what costs more, okay, for the patients. Because you can offer tons. And, and the other thing is, and this is something that took me a while. Barring like all how you how you rank things, not all have the same effectiveness. Okay, so what what I mean by that in terms of treating with plantar fasciitis, in my opinion, not everything is the same. So an anti-inflammatory orally in ice isn't the same as a cortisone injection. Okay, they have different effectiveness rates. Um, cortisone isn't isn't as effective, I think, as really healing it as like shockwave. And so, when you're offering things, a lot of times it's good to have this like an effectiveness rate. If you if you look in my there's a book that I put together on plantar fasciitis, I talk about what things are more effective. So, in my opinion, 
I think home, I think stretching is like effective here. Then I think foam rolling. And then I think physical therapy with Graston technique. So everything has a higher effectiveness. And so what we're offering in terms of in-office dispensing, we're offering things that are more effective for the patient that we really believe in. Okay. So if you don't believe in it, don't dispense it in your office. Okay. I know that sounds obvious. We don't dispense things just because we can earn money on it. You have to really believe in that. It has to be better than things that they can buy on, on Amazon. Okay. And so uh, you have to really, if you don't believe in it, don't, don't offer it. So for, for example, for me, I don't, we have a, a formula, one of the formula, whatever the, the antifungal things, I hardly do it. Okay. Once again, I don't believe in it. I don't think it really cures fungus. Uh, none of them. And so I'm normally doing uh, oral lamisil, e even the laser. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in it. And you guys, I think this is like heresy, <laughs> but I, I don't see the results and I, and I can't sleep well at night. So a lot of times I have a laser, but I'm not, I'm not doing it a lot because when I take pictures before and after, I'm just not seeing the results. I could be doing it wrong. So if you guys have like um, comments about this, this might be a heated topic, but put them underneath here. Uh, because if you guys really believe in it, you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. I have like two of the most expensive lasers around and I, have, you know, all the best topicals. I just don't see it really making a, making a difference for people. And it just gives them something to do. And then they just get frustrated and they say, oh, doc, this isn't working. You have to keep having that same conversation with them. So I, I don't do that. I don't do, uh, uh, I don't sell them the, the laser and then, and then add the oral pills at the same time. I, I don't, I don't think that's, I can't sleep well at night doing that. So, so things like that, you have to do what you really believe in. Okay, guys. Um, a few things that I really believe in are like doing foam rollers. We do a lot of foam rollers for Achilles tendonitis and plantar fasciitis. So everyone leaves with a foam roller. I, I do think uh, the different types of creams work well for, for callusing. I think anything that they'll use and then different types of pads work well. And then I also give them an option of, of getting it on Amazon. And I think I've talked to you guys about that before, but there's like an Amazon affiliate that you can develop. Um, you don't make a ton off of it and you could probably do your own like Shopify website as well. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you kind of, uh, those things right now. Okay. So let me share my screen with you guys. Okay. So here is the, uh, the, remember we talked about plantar fasciitis, right? This is the one that in, in one of the first days I gave you guys access to. And in terms of in-office dispensing, what you'll see here is you'll see different types of things, right? You're going to see, I'm encouraging potentially using a boot with a cortisone injection. You're going to see as well here, a walking boot. Those are DME, but you're also going to see orthotics. So orthotics could be, this says custom, but I could just as easily offer a non-custom orthotic. Okay. And then you see something called home therapy. So this would inc include a like foam roller. Okay, so if you go down and you see here, uh, I do have different types of foam rollers. I talk about there's a ball, there's an orb ball, there's a, a stick, there's these different things like that. This is what they're going to do at home. If they don't have one, they can certainly get one from me. Here's my example of a night splint. I don't usually use Strasburg socks, but I do night splints. And here are some over-the-counter inserts as well that I recommend on Amazon. And I do not carry them. Some people carry something like this or something similar in the office. So there, there's different ways of what you're going to offer uh, in the office. What's the reason, in, in just in our hands, why we don't offer non-custom? It's because we do so many custom that if they want non-custom, they can go somewhere else. We don't do the non-custom and the custom, but there's different opinions behind that. Okay. So that, that is how you do that. Now, if you want to offer things on, on Amazon, let me show you how that would work. So if you go to, uh, once again, my, my, my blog here, um, there's books and there's courses. Um, and then all the way down in the bottom, what you'll find here are Dr. Pelto's recommendations. Now this goes to Amazon and, um, what you'll see here, I have stuff that I put on here. Uh, I have some stuff on drop foot, on arthritis, on calluses, on ingrown toenails, on sievers, on weight loss, on dry skin. All these things are right here. Now, I do not make millions on this. I wish I did, <laughs> but I have them here. Okay. Here's the velocity brace. Here is a um, lacrosse ball for deep tissue massage. Uh, this is an insert that I, I like. There's a diff different type of massage tools and uh, walking boot. Some people have insurance plans where they can't get the walking boot. So different things like that, compression socks. KT taping. And I just put a whole bunch of stuff on here. Okay. Not that everyone uses everything, but I just have it here just in case they want to use it. And then uh, what they do is when they purchase it, uh, they can get, um, then there is some referral money that comes over to me. Okay. So that's pretty, it's called the Amazon affiliate account. It's pretty easy to make if you have a, a website. Um, so 
yeah. So those are some of the ideas about uh, in-office dispensing. Um, we do it every single day. Um, we also do the, the typical ones uh, for like ingrown toenails. So everyone after do a matrixectomy, they're going to get a, um, a post-op kit and things like that. Um, we do shower covers. We do you know, anything that you can kind of think of. Uh, we don't have like a supermarket there, but we have the, but in, in the thing, the thing is if you don't do them a lot, like the 80, 20 is where you kind of talk about, you, you keep what works and you get rid of what doesn't work. So if you're having these creams and you're never offering it, get rid of it, like stop it. Like don't keep buying it. Don't just offer it because you can offer it. It needs to be into your protocol every day, how you're doing it, how you're helping these patients. So it really, really helps to keep stuff that, that really works and stuff that doesn't work or that you don't believe in, don't, don't sell it. It makes you look bad. And then have a, just a wonderful return policy, right? If they don't like the stuff, give them their money back. Like it's not worth the bad will. A lot of times I'll give people these things to create goodwill for them. For example, you have a referring doctor, you want to give them a, a free gift when they come in. So if you guys found this helpful, um, if you want other information about um, in-office dispensing, I'm trying not to um, like advertise names here. Okay. These are just things that I actually use in the office. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section, like what things that you really like. If you think I'm totally off on these nail polish things that you guys love uh, and you sell a ton of it, that might be your practice. Um, but you know, I would love to know your, your comments. If you guys found this helpful, please, please, if you haven't already shared it with someone, you know, I wish I had this when I was starting out. Um, please put someone's name, your name, your name and email and their email. I'll send them uh, an intro to this, this uh, 30 day course. And then I'll send you a special bonus gift. Okay. Uh, once again, hope you guys in, enjoyed this. Uh, this is, this has been fun putting together and, um, you know, I hope you guys have found this beneficial for your practice. Okay. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Okay. Thanks.